Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Three Dragon Ante Legendary Edition. This was sent to me by WizKids and is designed by Rob Heinsu. Three Dragon Ante Legendary Edition is a fast paced card game for two to six players. Play it as a standalone game or use the role playing rules and ability discs included to add it to your next Dungeons and Dragons session. Well, we're not going to do that, but I'm going to show you uh, how to play the uh, standalone game. So in Three Dragon Ante, you are trying to. Um, get the most gold. Um, each player starts out with a certain amount of gold, depending on how many players there are. In a three-player game, it'd be 30. In a six-player game, there'd be 60. Um, then these coins form your starting hoard. Um, you then have an 80-card deck here, which has 70 standard dragon cards, as well as 10 random cards chosen from the mortal and legendary dragon cards, which I'll go into later. Each player draws a hand of six cards, uh, and then uh, you start the game. So the game is played in a series of gambits. Each gambit is usually three rounds consisting of five steps. Um, so uh, first off, each player will ante a card. They will play a card from their hand face down. So let's say I pick this card, put it face down. Let's say another player puts this card face down. Once you've chosen your ante cards, you then reveal them. Whoever revealed the strongest anti-card is the leader in the first round of the gambit. Um, however, if any card's tied, then the next strongest untied card is the leader. Now, in the rare case where all the cards are tied with at least one other card, you discard them all. Uh, and then you draw a card and choose a new card. But in this case, then you see uh, which card has the highest strength and all players anti that much. So. Since eight is the highest here, each player is going to ante eight coins. Now, the ante cards are now left here for the rest of the game, and they're not part of the stakes. Because then, whoever played the strongest ante card gets to lead. Now, on your turn, you play a card from your hand face up and check to see if the card's power triggers. Um, the first card in a round always triggers its power. But whenever you play a card, the strength of the card you played has to be equal to or lower than the strength of the card just played by the person to your right. Otherwise, it will not trigger. So let's say player one plays Silver Seer. Each player with at least one good dragon in their flight draws a card. Then you look at the top three cards in the deck, choose one to discard the other. So they're the first player. This automatically triggers since they have at least one good dragon in, their, in play. Then you look at the top three cards in the deck choose one, discard the others. So uh, let's say they choose this one and put the others in the discard pile. Now the next player, uh, if they want to trigger a power, they have to play a card equal to or lower than this. Uh, in this case, that's not too hard to do because they played a pretty strong high number. So let's say they play their own silver dragon. With each player with at least one good dragon, their fight draws a card. So that means both players would get to draw a card. Now you keep playing cards until everyone has played three cards in their flight. Um, so let me just show you like a typical round. So this is with two players, but okay. Let's say then the next player goes, okay, I'm gonna play White Dragon. Since it's lower than the one you just played, uh, the weakest opponent, which is you, gives me two gold. So they would get two gold and that player goes, okay, well I'm gonna play uh, Blue Dragon, which is lower, so it triggers. Each opponent gives you one gold, or each opponent adds one gold to the stakes for each card in your flight. So let's say they pay them gold back. And you keep going back and forth, and powers activate until you all both have three cards in play. So let's say after a round, these are the flights of these two players. We've got, this adds up to 17, this adds up to 11. So whoever has the highest total strength wins the, uh, wins the gambit. Uh, and that means they get the money. They take all the gold and the stakes and add it to their hoard. So the game's interesting because uh, you might want to play higher cards, but that means you won't get to activate the powers if they're not low enough. But if you play pot cards that are too low, you miss out on all that money at the end. So it's an interesting balancing act. Now, there are also special flights you can do. Uh, if you play three dragons of the same color, uh, let me show you. Like, uh, let's say you play silver silver and another silver 
That is a color flight. Uh, when you complete a color flight, each opponent pays you gold equal to the strength of the second strongest card in the flight. Uh, so everyone would pay you eight coins for this. If you play three cards of the same strength or number, so like eight, eight, eight here, uh, you steal gold from the stakes equal to the strength of one of the cards in your strength flight. You also take two anti cards and add them to your hand. So if I play three eights, I could steal eight gold from the, from the pile uh, and then take two cards and just add them straight to my hand. Now, if you ever have only one card left in your hand, you have to buy new cards. Uh, or if you ever find yourself with no cards in your hand. Um, to buy new cards, you reveal the top card and discard the top card of the deck. You pay gold equal to that, to the stakes. So in this case, eight. And then you would draw a car, uh, up to four cards. Also in this game, it's possible to go into debt or into the hole uh, at the end of the game. But it does not matter who the gold would have gone to. Uh, it's basically an accounting of how much gold you were unable to pay during the gambit. Uh, so at the end of the gambit, if you manage to acquire any gold, you'll pay what you owe into the hole. If you don't have any gold, then the game will be over. The reason being, the game ends when one player has no gold in their hoard left. Then, whoever has the most gold at the end wins. And that's pretty much the game. You uh, play cards to try to win, uh, win gambits, but also uh, play cards at the right moments uh, to activate special powers and or uh, play different flights. Now, let me give you some examples of some of the legendary cards or the uh, um, mortal cards in this. Here's an example, uh, Gold Monarch, draw a card for each gold, bleh, good dragon in your flight. And if you win this gambit, gift each opponent with three gold. Draco Lich, 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 Draco Lich. When the gambit is scored, you get plus two strength for each evil dragon in your flight. Copper Trickster, discard a different card in your flight and replace it with the top card of the deck. You can trigger the new card's power if you wish. They also have these mortal cards. This one, the thief just steals seven gold from the stakes. The Archmage, all cards you play later this gambit trigger their powers. That's pretty good. The Sorcerer, reveal the top three cards of the deck. Discard this card and replace it with one of the revealed cards. That card's power triggers. Put the other two revealed cards into the ante. So there are all sorts of tricks on the cards and powers that let you do different things. But yeah, otherwise you're playing cards in your flights and trying to win the money and get the most money. And that's the game. So there's a lot about this game that is left up to luck. And that might be the game's biggest flaw, but there are some interesting decisions to make here. Trying to decide to play higher cards to win the ante or the stakes versus lower cards to use the abilities is a clever mechanic. And there are very fun and mean abilities to mess with your opponent and steal gold. Uh, so it's fun to play. However, a lot of that is still dependent on how lucky your draws are. You can absolutely be lucky and draw tons of high numbered and or powerful cards and then there isn't a whole lot your opponents can do in that case. But still, the abilities are fun enough and the take that the take that mechanics are satisfying. So even though at its core this is kind of a luck based swingy sort of just card game, that's also kind of this in the spirit of the game. Like I could imagine this game being played in a tavern in D&D land. Uh, it's not super fair, but it's always fun playing those mean abilities and snatching gold away from people. So if you're a D&D fan, and or someone who likes these kind of mean card games, and you don't need your games to be completely balanced, uh, I could recommend this. It's, it's fun to play. It's not an essential buy, uh, but I had fun dicking over my friends. If you want something more balanced, maybe not for you. But if you like the theme, and or like you know, just being mean with powerful, mean, not necessarily fair cards, this might be your bag.